nabit ko dito sa noble life na binigay sa akin ang una itong friends ito ang sabi ng dog uh, two times a week ko na kinik ito ito po yung mga ginamit ko dito sa noble life na binigay sa akin ang una itong friends ito ang sabi ng dog uh, two times a week ko na kinik ito The cleanse itself is soluble in the soluble fiber. If you do some cleansing, you buy it in the drugstore. It's only able to, it's only laxative. You're able to remove your bowel normally, but you're not able to cleanse to cleanse your blood impurities. That's why we have the product that is so unique and um, clinically proven and studied because it has a soluble and insoluble fiber, at, at, as well as it brings your pH level into alkalinity. They are worried because. If you take the product, you will have uh, an ankylosis or alkaline. So do not worry because 80% of what you eat nowadays is more acidified and 20% only what you eat is only alkaline foods. As we age, so may na ng metabolismo mo, may, may, wala ka na siguro ng ersisyo, so you're suffering from stress or uh, prolonging the stress leading for oxidative stress. So better for you, you cleanse as well because na, lifestyle kasi ng tao na so wala nang special na nowadays po sa bahay ka lang so whatever you grab this food so maraming preservative junk food so maraming mga mga uh, siguro chemicals with that product or instant food so it's bad for you you know what uh, the the colon has no property of uh, uh, metabolism it's only a septic tank it's your storage bank so you have to clean it with the broom that's why you while taking the cleansing it has a soluble and soluble fiber so it cleans your colon in abnormalities as well in uh, leaving the environmental factors that your organs function normally as well as the sec secondary effect you're able to to eliminate the toxins in the heavy metals that stays in your blood that's why as long as you live as long as you eat you have to cleanse Ayan! Hello po sa ating mga viewers. Um, I just want to greet everybody. A good afternoon, um, good evening na po pala, or good morning sa lahat ng viewers who are watching from the different parts of the world. Um, sorry po for a very little, very little delay. Um, please bear with us. I hope po kahit papaano, papaano ay okay po tayong lahat. 
Um, by the way, I am Hannah Obligor from the marketing team. So currently, nakatune in po tayo sa ating health talk. At maya-maya po ay discuss ng ating guest doctor ang topic for today, which is lung cancer awareness. Kaya wag po kayong aalis. I hope I would see as much viewers as we have now or even more mamaya hanggang sa matapos si Doc. So please keep sharing po. Um, also, let us know um, how you feel by commenting and reacting to this live. So before we get to the good part, I would like to have the opportunity to share with you our upcoming events and activities. So ang dami pong nakaline up na events para po sa ating lahat, all for our noble mission that is to spread the awareness of how valuable our health is. Um, so first on the list is the 90 Days GBM Challenge for Las Casas and Mount Samat. So this is for our staffs, particularly the sales team. So how are we faring po? I hope we're on track and makaabot po tayo sa quota on time. So I think kaya-kaya naman po yan. Um, we still have more or less 60 days. Uh, kaya po, uh, habol pa po tayo. Next is the 90 Days Cleansing Campaign. Um, so this is for all, as long as you have purchased at least three boxes of plants in a single receipt, you'll have a chance pot to win our amazing prizes. So the promo runs from November to January po. Kaya if hindi pa po kayo nakaka-purchase, this is your sign. Next, um, Chamba at Farmers Plaza. Ayan, that will be on December 28 na po. Kaya mag-register na po kayo. For only 300 pesos, you can have a session of chamba plus 5 sachets of plants, which is worth of 562 pesos. O diba? What a steal po. Ayan. So, next. Uh, magbabalik po ang chamba sa Singapore. Coming soon na po yan. Abang-abang po kayo dyan. Next. The doctor is in po every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Available po si Doc Orteza from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Free consultation po ito. On Saturdays naman, we have Doc Emperador. Still, she's available from 10 a.m. to 2, to 2 p.m. So if you're around uh, Cubao or QC, please drop by po sa ating headquarters. Now, if malayo po kayo sa headquarters and basically geographically impossible to have a physical visit, don't worry po dahil meron po tayong doctor is on the air, which is pwede po kayong magpakonsulta kala doc through call. So this is by appointment only and still free pa rin po. The schedule is flashed on your screens. Um, just take a screenshot or take note nyo na lang po ang schedule uh, and better coordinate po with our staffs para legitimate po ang inyong appointment. Next is the Kumustahan. Supportahan Program at Noble Life TV together with the marketing and accounting and HR department po yan. So that will be on November 21 po, Monday. So let's catch up po sa mga ganap ng respective departments. We also have Noble Life presentation via Zoom that is every Wednesday at 4 p.m. So if you want to know more about the company and our products, pwede po kayong umaten dito. Now, um, if you're the traditional type, ayan yun ng virtual meeting, meron din po kaming NP sa headquarters. That's every Saturday at 2 p.m. po yan. Next, my cleanse detailed product training po tayo on November 23 on Wednesday at 9.15 a.m. Si Doc Ortesa po mismo ang mag explain about cleanse and what it does to our body and bakit natin need siya. So ayan, so we're inviting you uh, to please join us. Please attend po kayo. Next, for our health talk next Saturday about po yan sa skin disease prevention. If you're interested and you want to maintain a healthy skin, tune in pa rin po tayo sa ating live dito sa FB and YouTube. Ayan. Um, for regular updates on Chamba po, please follow us on the social media accounts flashed on your screens. Yan, just take a screenshot and ano po, take note. Uh, for Noble Life International naman din po, 
uh, just screenshot po this, uh, your screens. Naka-flash po yan dyan ngayon. Alright. So, ayan. Okay, let's not wait any further. So, our topic for today is about lung cancer awareness. So, some of you might already have a background about it, uh, while others might not. So, our doctor will elaborate more about that later. So, without further ado, let me introduce to you our guest doctor this evening. He is an orthopedic surgeon, a speaker, and a health wellness advocate. He travels around the world to speak to multiple audiences on various health topics. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Rylan Flores. Hi, good evening here in the Philippines, but I understand you're in New Zealand and I guess it's good morning already by now. So I hope all of you are okay. I think I do have to apologize a bit for kind of mixing up with the schedule. We just came from the conferment ceremonies of different specialists uh, in the Philippine Academy of Medical Specialists. So we had a kind of a little delay. So this is it. We got delayed a bit. But of course, uh, we still have an interesting topic to talk about right now, which is all about lung cancer. So I guess my slides are showing at this point in time. So if they are showing, let's start off with this. We all know about cancer and the leading cancer sites, the incidence of which since a decade ago, um, for both sexes, male and female, your lung disease or your lung cancers are actually one of the leading causes. As a matter of fact, for males, it's the leading cause for cancers. And of course, because of that, the mortality rate, it's the estimated top 10 cancers way back in a decade ago, ever since. For both sexes, it's lung, and for males, it's lung as well. In females, there's just breast cancer that supersedes it, but nonetheless, lung cancer is still a huge reason for mortality for women. Now, in other cancer sites, for both new cases, for 10 most common cancers ever since 2010, the breast leads for women most especially, but if you notice, it's the lung cancer for both sexes would actually be the leading cause for cancer. Now, how do we actually know if we do have lung cancers? There are a whole lot of symptomatology. And to begin with, we can actually start off with chronic cough. The thing is with chronic cough, especially with COVID-19, we sometimes should differ if the problem is viral, bacterial, parasitic, or even metabolic. But in this case, the possibility of cancer is also present. Of course, we do have bloody sputum, wherein we see blood in phlegm when we expectorate, which means that blood vessels have already been affected in our bronchus. Then with any cancers in general, we do have some form of weight loss. And it's not because that some would actually comment that they actually probably would be on a diet and that they're not eating well. That's the reason why they are having decreases in their temperatures. But in reality, the likelihood of a carcinoma can actually be present, especially if the weight loss is kind of sudden. On the other hand, not just weight loss, but the actual loss of wantingness to eat, like anorexia, can also be a reason. Now, Back pains. In general, most of the time when I say back pains, the leading cause of back pains is usually muscular in nature, especially for those who are in the working class. But if you do have problems that doesn't seem to disappear, then the possibility is a bony origin, like your osteoporotic fractures or fragility fractures in your vertebral column. But sometimes back pain, especially intractable ones, can be caused by pulmonary pathologies and lung cancer could be one of them. Of course, fatigue because your blood flow isn't as good anymore. And most of the time, your blood actually and oxygenation would actually go to the cancer cells or cancer mass. That's the reason why blood wouldn't go around. That's why you actually have more fatigue, um, easy fatigability, and with just a little work, 
the tendency is mapapagod kayo ng di oras. Then you do have hoarseness. Although unlike me, I'm typically hoarse because I actually have something on my throat. But a sudden hoarseness can actually lead to the doctors thinking of the possibility of carcinoma. And not only that, but if problems do rise up, the possibility of difficulty in swallowing could also be present. And of course, hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy doesn't really just look into lungs, but we actually look at your fingers. And what we usually would see is that the shape of the area, sometimes more often than not, changes. And how do we know it changes? Simply because oxygenation in the area could sometimes be a problem. And instead, one way of looking into it, if you notice these two thumb of ours, if you look into it, there's actually a uh, space in between. For pulmonary osteoarthropathy, that's actually becomes clubbed and you no longer have that space in between. Now, risk factors are technically modifiable and non-modifiable. Of course, the non-modifiable could be your, your, your family history and uh, things like uh, genetics. But more often than not, some risk factors are actually modifiable. Pag sinabi modifiable, we can do something about it. And the leading risk factor is smoking. And that goes for smoking or even persons who do not smoke but live and are in direct uh areas where smokers are have the possibility of lung cancers now let me just show you how lungs look like if you're looking at your screen the left hand side that's a normal lung pinkish actually and uh, like a balloon that's way way uh, blown up full of air which gives oxygen to the entire body but for carcinous or cancerous lungs you have problems with your lungs. You notice the one on the right-hand side. The problems about losing its luster, losing its capacity, and because of that, losing the capability of actually having oxygen interchange. Now, smoking facts. Majority of lung cancer is attributable to cigarette smoking. And did you know one puff of that cigarette actually contains more than a thousand chemicals? and 200 of which are actually carcinogenic. And compared, obviously, to non-smokers, non it has a 20-fold increase of having lung cancer, but that doesn't necessarily mean that just because you don't smoke, you don't have the possibility. But if you are around people who smoke, then it also increases as well. What's a cigarette? You have a drawing of a cigarette there. It's actually... For, for most, just a piece of paper with a whole lot of leaves inside that smokes. And we just huff and puff and just blow away the smoke as if nothing is, you know, wrong with it. But if you look, look into what is really contained in a cigarette, th these are some of the things that you can actually see. You'd see cadmium, and that these are the things you see in batteries. You see stearic acid, you can see that in candles. Toluene in those industrial solvents your nicotine in insecticides, your hexamine in lighter fluids, your ammonia, ammonia you actually see in toilet cleaners. You also have butane for the true lighter fluids, your acetic acid is seen in vinegar, your methane like your sewer gas, and most especially arsenic, which is poisonous, and carbon monoxide, which is actually we need to bring out of the body, not bring it in, and things like methanol and pain. Now, in the United States, passive smoking accounts for 3,000 lung cancer deaths per year. Quitters decrease their risk of having cancers, but it will take around 20 years to undo what smoking has done. This has a lot to do with how long you've already been smoking. If you've been smoking, say, for a year, the likelihood is it's you know easier for it to get out of your system. But if you've been smoking for 20 pack years, when I say pack years, that simply means that you can consume one whole pack of cigarettes in a day for the past 20 years. If it's longer than that, then what has been done the whole time would actually be difficult to undo at just one sitting. Of course, exposure to radiation, asbestos, polycyclic hydrocarbons, arsenic, 
chromates and chloromethyl ethers are actually present. And like I mentioned, there are some things that we cannot modify, and that's your family history and hereditary. Now, there are two types of lung cancers. You have your non-small cell carcinoma and your small cell carcinoma. Your non-small cell carcinoma can actually be divided into your identical carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, large cell carcinoma, and your identical squamous carcinoma. But for small cell carcinoma, you have the classical small cells, and sometimes your large cell neuroendocrine and the combination of small and non-small. Why do they need to divide the small cell and everything else non-small cell? It's because small cell carcinomas in the lungs are very, very aggressive. And when I say aggressive, from the moment it is diagnosed, lifespans usually just go about around three to six months. It's quite fast, hence aggressive, hence the possibility to succumb to carcinoma uh, increases. In contrast, you might have heard of uh, individuals having lung cancers and yet, you know, tumatagal pa rin ang buhay nila. The likelihood is not small cell carcinoma. Pero kung small cell carcinoma ang talagang inyong uh, naging diagnosis and naging uh, results ng biopsy or histopathological studies, it's sad to say, but because it is so aggressive that we sometimes give a span of around three to six months. Now, how do we diagnose cancers? Yes, we do have signs and symptoms, but these are all subjective. These are all things that we can ask and talk about. We need some objective things. And the first thing that we do is a chest x-ray. In an x-ray, most of the time, anything white is bone or a calcific density. Anything black is uh, air. That's the reason why we do have a chest x-ray done. Uh, there's black and white, white stripes, that's your rib cage, and the black area, which is actually your lung field. But in any case, there is a possibility that you see a tumor in the area, which is not normally there. Then that's one way of we can actually find out that there's something wrong with you. Other things would be your chest city scans. And in here, it's a three-dimensional cut of the area. These are both your lung fields. These are actually blood vessels and normal uh, airways, but if there is an area that's supposed to not have these huge markings or lung markings, as we call it, then we can see masses at a very, very small size. What else? Sputum cytology. And when we say sputum, it actually has to be the phlegm. That's why it's sputum. It's not saliva. That's the reason why when we do these examinations, we literally have them cough off. Because the likelihood is if we just get something from, you know, uh, without any effort, the possibility of it being spit or saliva increases. And with spit and saliva, you really won't see cells from these areas. That's why it has to be the sputum. But the best way to actually find out if there is lung carcinoma is through a biopsy. And the way to get that biopsy, the biopsy is actually one way of sending samples to the laboratory for the pathologist to actually find out and give us the final diagnosis. But there are ways to get that specimen to be given to the pathologist for biopsy. And what are these? First is your city-guided biopsy. You remember the city scan I showed you? You actually have that area. They put the mark, then they put this uh, needle on how deep, take a scan, and where the area flows actually uh, take an uh, aspiration biopsy. So that's your city guided biopsy. On the other hand, you have transbronchial biopsy. And in this area, they do uh, a bronchoscopy. It's an endoscopic exam wherein they look into all the way from the nose through the mouth, through the larynx, through the trachea, your bronchos, and afterwards your different lung fields. And when they do see areas that there's a possibility of a mass, they kind of brush the area, or if they can, take a small chunk or pinch of an area to actually have the biopsy done. On the other hand, if there's fluid in the area, uh, whether in and out of the lungs, then we collect this fluid uh, either by aspiration or through what we call a thoracostomy, it's such a small, small wound. Uh, needle wound, and then we actually collect fluid, or a thoracostomy, 
which means we actually put in a huge uh, chew, probably speaks your finger, on the side and collect fluids. And all of these fluids collected is what is tested for cytology. All of these are directly linked, which means that if there is a an area where there is a mass or a lesion that they can see, then again, again, naman makikita, madetetermine kasi dun mismo kukuha ng sampling. Now, what's the treatment? For non-small cell lung carcinoma, surgery is still uh, a good thing, especially if we catch it early. It's relatively small. It doesn't, you know, go around its uh, area or any, uh, any possible vicinity. But chemotherapy and radiation or the combination of any of these three can actually be done. But the moment the small cell lung carcinoma lung, we take away surgery, we just do chemotherapy and radiation. Why? Because of its aggressiveness, the likelihood of recovering from surgery alone and not even the disease entity might be difficult. And the possibility of metastasis already might be uh, fast-paced. So surgery is no longer an option for small cell carcinoma. Now, aside from surgery, chemotherapy, where we give medications on a regular basis, mid-timing, three times a week, um, sorry, every three months is what we do uh, for some of the chemotherapy regimens. And another is your radiation therapy or the gamma knife. Uh, but this one is to be done by your radiation is done by your uh, radiologists, but your chemotherapy are usually done by your oncologists. Just to mention a couple of medications we do give for chemotherapy, we do have tyrosine kinase inhibitors, Tarseva, Eresa, Kisotinib. So these are just examples. I won't dwell into much. But the better thing to do is actually to prevent and when we do prevent, number one is smoking. We're glad that because of the laws that have been passed to mga nakalipas na taon, even before the pandemic, maski papano, it limited the areas where smokers can smoke. And uh, these areas even include uh, the areas where they cannot smoke, public uh, transportation, public areas, the malls. So there are only, if you notice, small areas of designated uh, designated smoking area. So at least, must na contain na yung area for smoking. Now, since tobacco use is a known or probable cause of death for respiratory diseases, we just want to say that it's not just lung cancers that can be caused by smoking. There are a whole lot of other respiratory diseases that can be, you know, caused by smoking. You do have tuberculosis, pneumonia, influenza, bronchitis, asthma, and just lung cancer is one of them. Plus the fact that fires caused by smoky materials actually is quite common and very devastating, most especially if you know an entire house household burns down. So let's be proactive, preventive about not using the cigarette. Then we were mentioning about the environmental tobacco smoke or the passive smoker or those who really don't smoke but are in areas near constantly for those who smoke. So it contains all of the carcinogens and toxic agents, actually even more because you know that there's a filter at the end of the cigarette, which means when you do smoke, that filter takes out some of the toxins that you actually put in but for the passive smoker in reality you know you inhale everything that the smoker exudes and it, this actually results in aggravated asthma impaired blood circulation bronchitis pneumonia even eye and nose irritation and like i said it increases the risk of lung cancer and heart disease by 20 to 30 percent now for children if they are exposed to passive environmental tobacco smoke 
60% are likely to suffer acute upper and lower respiratory tract infection. And because of that, the likelihood that they become asthmatics increases. And because of that as well, you would have impaired lung function. May problema na sabaga. So, other areas not even directly linked to the lungs would also probably give pathologies like your middle ear infections, making them uh, problems with hearing, and even sudden infant death syndrome. So, how do we quit smoking? That's the easier thing to say, but quite difficult to actually do, especially for chronic smokers. So what we do to help them, we give them all these suggestions. First and foremost, um, we can set a quit date. What do we mean by setting a quit date? You know, give a time frame. By this date, I quit smoking. And you don't only say that to yourself. You actually notify friends and relatives that you're going to quit so that you can have external support. And try to look back. Kailan nga ba kayo talaga nag-umpisang maligarilyo? At kailan nga ba kayo talagang umpisang nagsususubok ng panigarilyo? And try to see the time frame and how many sticks you've actually consumed. You'd be surprised uh, the amount of cigarettes you've actually consumed. Now, one other way is changing your smoking routine. Um, one of which is switching the brands. You find the stakes. Well, there's such a thing as menthol, non-menthol. If you want one over the other, then try to smoke the other so that you don't like it, you'd stop. Plus, the number of actual cigarettes you smoke, we can lessen this. So if, say, you finish a whole pack in a day, let's give it a few weeks. You can start just by, you know, taking in half a pack and then half of half that pack to half of that, half of that, half that back. Until you end up with just one stick in a day and that's about it. You're done. You can also not smoke automatically, meaning not have it regularly available so that you'd find difficulty in smoking. You'd find difficulty to do smoking. And of course, making it inconvenient. For instance, you don't buy cigarettes by the... Uh, by the bunch or the carton don't even buy by the single carton try to buy it singly one it's quite expensive two it's such a hassle and that being hassle is actually what we would want so you could actually decrease the possibility of smoking and last make it unpleasant um, what I do uh, two ways making it difficult for you I usually ask them where to buy. Uh, where do they buy? And if they give me an area, I ask them to not buy there. Sometimes here's your house, there's a sari sari store in front, there's a grocery in front, because you don't have sari sari stores in New Zealand. Then don't buy there. You go around two or three blocks away and you buy your cigarettes from there because that travel hopefully would discourage you from buying. And if you actually have been smoking, Try to collect the butts. I've had uh, and have it put in a container. I have a couple of patients who actually did this. And they sent me these huge five liter uh, canisters. And actually have consumed these in just a span of two weeks. So that's how strong they have been smoking. But they actually saw the amount of cigarettes they consumed. Both of them have actually quit cold turkey. And that's like when they decided that's it. No haggling, no decision making. They just simply stop from smoking. On the other hand, if you can literally throw away your cigarettes, that's the best thing you can do. Like I said, change your routine. Um, most cigarette smokers are orally fixated. They have to have something in their mouth. Try to use other things like... Uh, Sugarless gum or candies, uh, chewing, and not, you know, they usually say that they might get fat, but you try to choose what you can chew on so that uh, your mouth will actually do something more than just simply smoking. And if you want some things, reward yourself. And you reward yourself because you haven't smoked for a particular time frame. 
Now, what's the benefits of quitting smoking? Did you know that 20 minutes of you quitting smoking or not smoking, your blood pressure and pulse rate returns normal? Why? It increases. But because you stopped just 20 minutes ago, these go down to normal. And because of that, your circulation, both in your distant extremities, your hand and your feet, are much, much better. You lengthen this eight hours, your oxygen levels return to normal, and the chances of heart attack decreases. In a whole day, you don't smoke, your carbon monoxide eliminated from the body, and your lungs clear out. That's why you have mucus and other debris. That's why you sometimes cough and remove all the phlegm that's present. It's because it's a clearing out thing for your lungs. Two days, nicotine is no longer detected. And even your sense of taste, your sense of smell would have improved by then. Three days, breathing becomes easier. As the bronchial tubes relax, your energy levels increases as well. Now, we lengthen it two and a half weeks. Your circulation improves, which makes walking easier. Much longer, three to nine months. Your breathing problems, like shortness of breath, wheezing, are sometimes gone. And your overall function is increased by five to 10%. Much longer in five years' time frame, the risk of heart attack falls about to half of that of a true smoker. Longer at 10 years, the risk of lung cancer falls about to half of that of a smoker. And it's now quite similar to those who have never even smoked. So, but what else can we do? We're talking about pulmonary systems, but in our body, if one system is affected, other systems come to compensate for it. Your, your neurological uh, compensates your cardiovascular compensates, your gastrointestinal compensates, your everything in your body compensates because if you do have problems such as lung carcinoma, we clean up, we detoxify, we use cleanse. And how do we use cleanse? They're in a sachet. It's actually mixed with a glass of water and taken in at bedtime. It has both insoluble and soluble fiber. What's the difference? Your insoluble fiber is like your broom that literally cleans your intestines, your gut. But your soluble fiber is because it's soluble, it actually slides out in liquid form. It goes to the nooks and crannies of your intestines, especially in your colon. And because of that, it will simply co collect itself easier for the insoluble fiber to brush it out. Now, what's the importance of a healthy colon? A healthy colon will actually prevent diseases. And if you do have the disease, you've noticed that in two, three days time frame, you notice how much your physical body ages, your face ages, your body ages, you feel weak and all, very, very sickly. But let's start off with cleaning our colons because in doing so, we actually decrease the possibility of disease entities. And if we do not get sick, it actually slows down the aging process. Getting sick increases and hastens that aging process. But if we're healthy enough, it literally slow, slows down. So after cleaning, we actually need to supplement ourselves to make sure that our nutrition is actually better. We do mega nutrition, and how do we do that? By using cryptomonidalis with natural PPARs. It's recognized by experts as one of the most promising health food in the 21st century. This is actually old because 21st century is so promised. And it's been researched by prominent medical doctors. It's actually uh, been created by Professor Wong Sun Te, this guy, the smiling face of a guy. And if you notice, there are vats uh, in the picture. That's where they cultivate cryptomonidalis. It's basically just an algae. As an algae, difference is it's medical grade. It is not something that just because it rained, you actually just shovel your, uh, your canals and whatever you collect of an algae, you put in a capsule, you take it. No, these are actually a higher form of algae 
that is cultivated. They started out with one, two, three, um, earlier on increasing to five to eight, and I think by this time they have 12 to 20 uh, vats already. Cryptomonadalis is a primitive structure, no cell membrane, and because of that, it actually diffuses easier. It's absorbed easier. And because it is absorbed easier, the nutrients that one can take from this and get from this, since it's quite easy, we can actually benefit from all of its nutrients. We'll be mentioning that in a while. So that's Professor Wong. So those are the vats. They're not rather deep. They're just like around three feet. We know this because we were with him a few years ago. No, but a few years, a decade ago. We visited him in this area and uh, took a tour. And since we now know where uh, Cryptomonadalis is collected, we saw the process. And this process, it's actually collected from the vats into these areas, as I see it's greenish. And from this, it's actually sorted and collated and concentrated. And from that, it's actually cleaned and uh, we take away the sediments and even non-cryptomonidalis algae. So what comes out at the end is a very, very pure form of cryptomonidalis. Beyond it, it's because it was washed well, it's now dried. And it is dried, it becomes a very greenish powder form. Now that's it. That's actually my hand. I still have the same bracelet. And after it's dried up, placed in sacks, they now go to the compacting area. Why compacting? Because the tablet form of Cryptomandalis is that it, it is a pure form of Cryptomandalis, nothing more, nothing less. So it's not something that's placed in a capsule. It's actually collected and compounded into a very tight tablet. That's the reason why if you get a chance to hold your cryptomonadalis, it's rather rough because there is no covering, there is no tablet. Everything else is pure cryptomonadalis. Now, let me just show you this. On your left-hand side is chlorella. On your right-hand side is cryptomonadalis. Why chlorella? It's quite common. There are a lot of supplements that has chlorella in it. As a matter of fact, some would actually just be pure chlorella. And the difference is your chlorella cells, if you notice they're round, they're rather dark in the edge. It's not really dark. It simply is because they actually have spicules surrounding the area. And because of these spicules, it actually is quite difficult to be absorbed. In contrast, if you look at your cryptomonadalis on the right-hand side, you'd actually notice of a very, very thin lining because there is no cell membrane. It's now easy um for it to be absorbed the funny thing is that chlorella growth factor is found inside your cryptomonadalis this is a team that went to taiwan and uh, this mom lila over there beside me uh, others in the group are the one in the middle dr lebrando the guy in the white is Dr. Edwin Bien, nakasama ko sa kalusugan, kakabilib. Of course, the Dr. Gisela Sarmiento and the other doctors as well. Now, this is what I want you to see, the nutritional profile of your cryptomonidalis. On the left-hand side, you have your macronutrients. You have your protein, you have your carbohydrates, you have your fat. Because in general, your cryptomonidalis is not really a medication or, or a, an actual supplement. It's basically food. It's the best food you can have because it's complete. And not only that, if you notice in that chart on your left-hand side, it has fiber. It has chlorophyll, minerals and waters. It actually has chlorella growth factor. Of course, your RNA and DNA included. But wait, there's more. You do have vitamins A to Z in the middle. And your B complexes, your E, your C. So... It really does contain a whole lot of these nutrients. But again, wait, there's more. You have your minerals. And in your minerals, you do have potassium, which is an important electrolyte. You have your magnesium needed for immunity. 
you have your iron, which I do use for my patients who are anemic or tend to be anemic. And you have your zinc, which is also used for immune functions. And for me personally, as an orthopedic surgeon, you do have a certain amount of calcium. So for those who are lactose intolerant, this is quite a good replacement for it. Now, how much do you take in? If you notice that spoon over there, I don't give that much. For those who actually are eating well, moving well, drinking well, then probably five tablets in a day is a sufficient amount. But if you do have problems like anemia, diabetes, or the other uh, other disease entities, then we might increase it probably three times in a day of five tablets every time. So as high as 15 tablets in a day. But there are you know, effective ingredients. You have your PPAR, which we will explain in a bit, alpha, beta, gamma, which actually helps in all the different areas of the body. You have your chlorophyll for blood purification, and because of that, an antitoxic effect. And like I said, your chlorella growth factor gives us energy because of your RNA and DNA. Now, let me show you this article, Your Health Smart. Um, exercise in a pill, you know, in the United States, they actually are quite sometimes lazy that they just want to take an appeal for anything and everything. And that includes staying fit and, you know, not becoming obese or overweight. But if you notice in this article, Professor Ronald Evans uh, and his team found out that this drug, GW1516, as it was initially called, is activated by PIPAR Delta and the pathway resulting in improved resistance to weight gain and insulin response. When coupled with training, endurance rose by 77% over exercise alone. And actually, um, with mice, where they, where they uh, usually would uh, experiment, you know, most would do things better than those who are not having crypto monodales and PPAR. Thing is, if you notice, this article was done March 2009. It's already 2022 in a month or so, we're now 2023. This was already an old article. So we've been using it all throughout longer than when the article says. So I've mentioned PPAR, what's PPAR? It's peroxisome proliferator activated receptor. I know it's a mouthful. I mean, it actually took me a year to pronounce it properly. And what it is in molecular biology is it's actually a nuclear receptor protein. It's actually um, a gene to help transcribe and regulate other genes. And it does regulate your cell differentiation, your cell development, and even your cell metabolism. And that includes your proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Let me just show you this hanger-like substances. They're agonists in natural products. But if you notice, they're endogenous. There are synthetic ligands. And the thing is with all these ligands, they're quite similar to your natural counterpart, which is basically your PIPA, your PIPA alpha, beta, gamma, and even delta. So, just to show it, it's a receptor. So anything, oops, sorry, anything that is absorbed will be transformed and transcribed by PPAR so that it's now into a desirable nutrient that will actually proceed to where it is needed to actually give its help and function. So I usually would, uh, would compare this to a toll gate. You actually pass through a toll gate, you have to pay, get a receipt, tell them where you're going, etc., etc., or where you came from. And then when everything else has been settled, the boom rises and you pass your car. On the other hand, what if you actually have uh, these, uh, what they call RFIDs, auto sweeps, or these uh, computer chips in your car, that when you pass through that toll gate, you simply pass through because everything else is transacted within the second. 
which makes time frame quite a whole whole lot short. That's what your P bar is doing. It lessens the time frame and it already helps in forming what needs to be what what is needed and eventually for this to be transported to where it is needed. So some biomedical effects, when it is activated, you do have better fat metabolism, you have glucose homeostasis, this is why it's an insulin um, regulator, and of course, cell differentiation. But as a transfer pressure, it does have anti-inflammatory properties. And the thing is, if there is any problem, inflammation is the number one thing that needs to be dealt with. Now, with this um, schematic, you do have your liver, you do have your uh, muscle. What happens with serum free fat acids? Everything else increases except your insulin sensitivity, which actually decreases. That's why your adipose cells or your fat cells become larger. That's why you become fatter. On the other hand, by using your PPAR glycogen, what happens is these cells actually decrease because of decreasing amounts in all of its components. And when you decrease serum fat, free fatty acids, you also likewise decrease your free fatty acid synthesis in your liver. You also decrease your long fatty acid chains, which now results in your adipose cells decreasing. Not only that, we talked about the inflammation that can be caused and the anti-inflammation that can be helped with with PBAR directly both for vascular areas and inflammatory cells it decreases cytokines decreases chemokines these are the things that gives it problems and it actually even increases the outsource or outbound of your cholesterol mas maganda pa yung paglabas ng cholesterol and the molecules that make these cholesterol stick are lessened. That's why it's easier for it to be effluxed. On the other hand, with indirect, your sugar levels go down because your insulin sensitivity goes up. And because of that, your triglycerides go down. Your good cholesterol, which is your high-density lipoprotein, also increases as well. Now... Let me just show you again the biochemical equation of your pioglitazone. This is actually what was done by Takeda long ago and GlaxoSmithKline, your erosiglitazone. These are actually medications used for diabetes like Avandia or your erosiglitazone. The thing is, if you notice, the chemical equation is quite similar to that of your PPAR. That's the reason why this is a synthetic medication, but we can have congeners of the natural PPAR coming from your cryptomonidales. Or in some cases, we do need a concentrated form of PPAR. We can do that in a small scoop placed in the underneath your tongue for better absorption. So the effects in cryptomonidales and medicines, it reduces the level of your cholesterol in probably 50 to 20 percent in a month. The regulation of your sugar, as well as your glycosylated hemoglobin, which is the three month time frame of fasting without sugar, becomes normal in three to six months. It can also modulate immune functions, meaning other metabolic problems like your contact dermatitis, psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis. And in my case, because of surgeries, I use it for wound healing. And of course, some antiviral effects, that's why it increases and boosts our immune system. And I would want to point out underneath. Although it says prophylactic and therapeutic effects for cancer, we really don't know if we're going to get cancer or not. So the idea is we make sure that our bodies are strong so that cancer doesn't develop or envelope and become full-blown. So better prophylaxis. Now, improvement in some arthritis and skin lesions. If you notice on your right-hand side, that's time after treatment, it's a pain score. In the span of three months, from a 7.5 to a 3, this means that the pain which becomes debilitating can actually be lowered to pain that can be tolerated, which means if you tolerate, you can still go up and about your regular jobs on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Let me just show you a picture of somebody who has psoriasis. Psoriasis is this skin disease that actually flakes and uh, uh, becomes very itchy, very swollen, and very red and hyperemic. So we have a picture from November 19 to a picture in February 8. If you notice before, we have those scaly portions in the areas of the neck, the ear, preauricular, even on the sides of your, around the orbit, plus skin and the hair. But after three months, relatively so much decreased. And because of that, swelling and inflammation decreases, pain decreases, movement is better, and it's not that paralytic anymore. Or you say, hindi na siya kakate. Likewise, picture before affecting your thigh, your knee, that's the reason why they do have arthritic pains. I'm not saying that's totally gone, but it's a whole lot better than its original picture prior to using cryptomonidalis and PPA. Now, let me just show you this. We targeted it together with some medications for liver uh, carcinoma and comparing it with phenofibrate, GLA, and everything else. Your cryptomonadalis is actually quite similar, and all of these have their PPAR, and the effects are much, much greater, even double than that of the regular ones. I mentioned about cholesterol decreasing 15 to 20% in the next month. So in, this is a one that's around 210, which is abnormal. Normal values would probably be around 200. Just in two weeks, it's 195. In four weeks, it's already 180. But now in just a month's time, didn't progress, didn't use anymore. So goes up 205, way above normal. So with the different researches, it does have beneficial effects to your liver, your brain, your heart, decreasing stress, decreasing inflammation, your kidneys, your digestive tract, and like I mentioned, your lungs, which gives us a better organ picture and a better systemic function. And of course, these have been studied by health experts. These health, health experts include Professor Wang Sun Ting and Dr. Ilgen Su. They both developed studies and trials that done that. And Dr. Yu Sing Chao is actually the one who's uh, scrutinized the papers and trials that were done by these two doctors. And he's found out that it actually confirms the research shown via using cryptomonidales and containing PPAR agonists. So here are the local advocacies and uh, in other media and print coverage. So it is not yet too late. We leave the pack behind and I mean that smoking pack behind. So if you would want to decrease the risk of having lung carcinoma, of course, the modifiable ones are the ones that we can do something about it. Smoking is one of them. So, you know, let's do this for our family, for our friends, for our loved ones. And as I said, food is simply our medicine. And I guess that is my last slide. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Maraming maraming salamat po. I guess that's it. Ayan, so that's all about lung cancer, our dear readers. Uh, I, I mean, viewers. <laughs> the reassuring thing about the disease is we kind of have a control over it. So as long as we are disciplined and we practice a healthy lifestyle, and of course, if we take our products such as cleanse, uh, crypto, and if you have a little or extra money, PPAR, then we have a lower risk of acquiring it. Um, thank you, Doc. Uh, we've learned so much today, and I'm thank sure you. the audience did as well. Yes, well, that was a very comprehensive and, and informative discussion on the topic. Um, so before I let you say for your last message to our audience, before we end our show, I would like to promote again our events and activities sa mga hindi po nakaabot kanina. Ayan. So first po is the 90 Days GBM Challenge. Uh, for Las Casas and Mount Samat, that's from October 22, January 2023 po. Uh, next, 
uh, ongoing pa rin po ang ating 90 days cleansing campaign in which maaari po kayong manalo as much as uh, 5,000 pesos and 5 boxes of cleanse. Next is our Chamba. Um, that's on December 28 na po sa Farmers, uh, Farmers Plaza. Uh, at may magbabalik po sa si Singapore. Uh, coming soon po let ang Chamba dyan. So abang-abang lang po kayo. Uh, next is Dr. is in po every Monday, Wednesday and Friday po. Si Doc Artesa po ay available po sa Manila headquarters. While on Saturday naman po si Doc Emperador. Meron din po tayong Doctor is on the air. Please take note po on the schedules flashed on screen. Uh, ngayong Monday naman po, November 23, is ang Kumustahan Suportahan Program with the Marketing, Accounting, and HR Department. Uh, next Wednesday naman po, we'll have a Noble Life presentation via Zoom. That's every 4 p.m. po yan. Meron din po tayong NP on-site sa Manila HQ. That's on Saturday po at 2 p.m. Uh, on next Wednesday naman po, November 20, uh, 23, we will have a cleanse detailed product training with Doc Artesa po yan. And lastly, for our health talk next Saturday, our topic is about skin disease prevention. So still, that's via Facebook and YouTube live pa rin po. Ayan. So going back po to Doc Rylan. Hello po, Doc. Um, before yes, we end, what do you have... Yes po. Um, do you have any words of encouragement or any messages before we part ways with our audience? Yes. Uh, in reality, um, we really don't know if cancer, lung cancer in particular, but any cancer for that matter can hit us. So the question now is what can we do to actually better ourselves so that cancer just doesn't blow up? Because the moment we become weak, we become stressed, we become negligent of our bodies the likelihood that cancers can actually increase and develop. So we eat right, we eat well, we eat at the right time with the right food. We drink uh, water, two to three uh, liters in a day. If you can drink milk, congratulations. We move, we cannot be sedentary. So your 10,000 steps in a day is one of the things we can actually do. A little resistance exercises is much better. If you can do sports, that's a whole lot more. Four, avoid what needs to be avoided. Avoid cigarettes, avoid alcohol, avoid, you know, non-regulated -reg uh, drugs and uh, all of these other poisonous materials. And five, you do rest ourselves. But if you cannot do that like most of us, then six, you cleanse and supplement ourselves. I guess that's the best thing we can do for our bodies, for our families, for our friends, and for our loved ones. Ayan. Ayan, so thank you so much, Doc, uh, for gracing us with your presence and thank for you. sharing uh, uh, with us your knowledge. Ayan. Noble Lifers, that concludes our health talk today. Once again, this is Hannah Obligar in behalf of the company I dare say in noble life, we care for you naturally. Enjoy the rest of the night, Pa. The cleanse itself is soluble in insoluble fiber. If you do some cleansing, you buy it in the drugstore, but you are not able to cleanse to cleanse your blood impurities. That's why we have the product that is so unique and um, clinically proven and studied because it has a soluble and insoluble fiber at, at, as well as it brings your pH level into alkalinity. They are worried because if you take the product, you will have uh, an ankylosis or alkaline. So do not worry because 80% of what we eat nowadays is more acidified and 20% only what we eat is only alkaline foods. As we age, so may na metabolism mo, may, may, wala ka na siguro ng ercisio, so you're suffering from stress or uh, prolonging the stress, leading for oxidative stress. So better for you, you cleanse as well. Because na, lifestyle kasi ng tao na, si wala nang, especially nowadays po, sa bahay ka lang, 
So whatever you grab this food, so marami preservative junk food, so marami mga mga uh, siguro chemicals with that product or instant food, so it's bad for you. You know what? Uh, the the colon has no property of uh, uh, metabolism, it's only a septic tank. It's your storage bank. So you have to clean it with the broom. That's why you, while taking the cleansing, it has insoluble, insoluble fiber. So it cleans your colon in abnormalities as well in uh, leaving the environmental factors that your organs function normally, as well as the sec secondary effect. You're able to, to eliminate the toxins in the heavy metals that stays in your blood. That's why as long as you live, as long as you eat, you have to cleanse. Ang katangian ng isang mahusay na karunungan Ay ang paggamit ng pinakanatural Sa mabisang produkto matatagpuan oh, oh, oh. Positibo sa lahat ng bagay Sa physical, emotional, at spiritual Sa ganahan sa buhay Ang hangat tinuman Nabola Ang kalusugan ay kayamanan Nabola Ay kayamanan sa kalusugan Na ang bawat pamilya Maiwasan ang karamdaman Isang bagong henerasyon Harapin ang hamon ng buhay May pag-ibig tunay na kapayapaan Tagumpay at pagkakaisa sa lipunan Nabola Kalusugan ay kayamanan Nabola Ay kayamanan sa kalusugan Nabola Ang kalusugan ay kayamanan Nabola Ay kayamanan sa kalusugan Ang kalusugan ay kayamanan